kind of record this. So hot and cold weather concrete. You see here in this picture, it's actually hot water is, is was added. And so there's actually steam coming up the concrete, off the concrete. Um, it's, it's cold. Uh, subgrade and everything's not frozen though, which is key. You never want to pour concrete on frozen subgrade. So when we deal with hot or cold weather concrete, either one, you need to understand your environment. You know, are you pouring up in uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota area? Are you down over here in you know New Mexico, Amar uh, New Mexico, Arizona, um, California area? I mean, they're all different. You know, if you look at different parts of Texas, you know, whether you're in Dallas or Amarillo or San Antonio or Houston, down in Midland, I mean, it's all it, they're all different environments. Um, depending on where you're at, even throughout the uh, you know fall and summer and, and, and winter time. Some places down here as you get to the coast, they don't really have a winter. Um, it doesn't ever snow very much. They don't have freeze thaw durability issues. So they don't, a lot of times they won't even add air in their concrete. You get up here, sometimes, you know, their summers are very light. Um, you know, they, so they don't really deal a lot with hot, hot cold weather concrete. So in Oklahoma, we deal a lot with hot and cold weather, or a lot of hot weather, especially. Um, I used to kind of tag team with another guy to talk about hot and cold weather, because he was from Indiana and I was from Oklahoma, and together we could put together a really awesome hot and cold weather concrete presentation, um, because Oklahoma doesn't have as many cold cold weather issues. Um, but we have a lot of hot weather issues. So a lot of times to kind of escape the, the hot weather, we can go do midnight pours, you know, two or three in the morning, we'll start pouring concrete. And that way everything's finished and everything before the, um, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock rolls around. It's not as, uh, starts getting really hot. And that, that humidity um, is really low. The moisture that's in that concrete, uh, since it's already hard, it's it's a lot harder for that moisture to come out of the concrete. So pretty much the mechanism in hot weather, you know, it's all about what your ambient air temperature is, the temperature of the actual concrete, uh, the wind, and the humidity. All four of those factors play into hot hot weather concrete and what makes hot weather concrete hot weather concrete so what will happen is that moisture on that surface it'll actually start evaporating from the sun and it'll cause tension on the top of that concrete and then you can start having cracking and stuff so you really don't obviously don't want that so we talked about when we talked about admixtures and, and accelerators and retarders and how how the whole system kind of worked. So we should all be familiar with the, the rate of heat of hydration, um, where we have the cement and the water react. It produces, you know, it's an exothermic reaction, so it releases heat. You can measure that heat release. And so whenever water and, and cement initially mixed, it produce, produces a very, very short, uh, you know, burst of heat. And then as you, uh, it's still being mixed in the truck, a lot of times that heat slows back down. You can take it from the truck to the job site. You can place your concrete before, you know, your goal is before that concrete starts um, reacting. So, you know, your initial sets really, that placement window is, you know, you're done. That's really the end of the placement window. The finishing window is from initial set to final set whenever, you know, that concrete, that surface can't ever get any more finish. It's just, it's too hard. And so your goal with hot weather is to prolong your placement window. Because what happens is when it gets really hot out, this whole reaction speeds up. So this window goes like that. So the, the placement window 
gets smaller, the finishing window gets smaller in hot weather. So your goal is you're trying to figure out, you go, okay, I just want it, you know, to be a little bit more what I'd call normal. I don't want these, this window to really be shortened. And so you really would kind of want to almost extend it back to where, where you're, what you think of as normal. And so that's kind of your goal. And so, um, so how do you do that? You want to prolong your placement window and you really, your, your finishing window, you don't necessarily, um, you may want to, if it's, if it's really shrinking up quite a bit on you, then you may want to prolong it some. But if you're getting a lot of plastic shrinkage cracking because it's too long of a, a finishing window, then you need to be kind of careful. So sometimes retarders can be a bad thing in, in, in hot weather because they extend that finishing window, but not necessarily that placement window. So again, the goal is to maintain or extend that initial set. So, so right there, initial set. So you wanna make that placement window, you wanna have a good placement window so your concrete doesn't set up too soon. So what you can do is you can actually adjust your mixture designs. You can do things like use a hydration stabilizer, use chilled water, use ice, um, you can use uh, an increased amount of cementitious material, so like fly ash. You have the ability to go from 10% to maybe 20%. Um, a lot of times in the, in the summer, you may want to put a sprinkler on top of your aggregate stockpile to cool it down. So you just have water on top of your aggregate cooling it down. So that's really common. Uh, things you can do actually on the job site. Um, you can, you know, a lot of times you can spray water on the actual, on the ground where you're going to pour on top of, you know, you don't want to obviously flood the ground, but if you spray a little bit of water there, then you're able to, uh, you're able to kind of cool that surface down a little bit. Same thing with your formwork. So, you know, you may want to use, instead of metal forms, you may want to use wooden forms. Um, that can also, you know, change things a little bit too, but uh, then it costs more sometimes to, to build a formwork. So that's kind of, you can see a picture there of somebody just, you know, lightly taking a water hose and just, uh, just kind of watering down the concrete. Oh, the subgrade, I mean. Uh, and this is kind of, I need to get some better pictures because these aren't mine. A lot of them, but this is also, um, you know, chunks of ice. You can just get bags of ice, rip them up, and put them in there. Um, that's a big chore for anybody on a on a hot weather day at a, at a concrete plant, buying that much ice and just, you know, putting so many bags of ice, depending on what your mix is. You really don't want any more than 50% replacement for ice, though. If you get more than 50% replacement. Um, what will happen is it just doesn't, the workability is, you know, you have so much less water that that workability, it just doesn't, it takes too long. Um, you want all your ice to, to melt before you get to the job site. It's kind of your goal. Um, so sometimes if your job site's real close, it's better to have chill water. So just water that's a lot colder. Um, so ice sometimes because of how, how it melts and stuff, it's not as reliable and it's not as quick, um, and, and consistent throughout your mix. So sometimes chilled water is a little bit better. These chillers sometimes can cost a quarter of a million dollars. So you kind of have to, um, you know, you have to really be in hot weather climates to, to, to feel like this might be beneficial or pour a lot of concrete. Um, where temperatures are, are a large focus for your customers. Um, but they do work really well. We have most, most places in Oklahoma have it. They'll have a chiller or they'll have ice um, in, the, in the summer. So your curing method is also another big thing with construction practices. So you can see here, this is a bridge deck. They have burlap 
sack. Remember when you kid, you did a sack race. And, you know, you maybe went from one side to the other with these little burlap sacks. Well, same material, but instead of, you know, putting potatoes or, or your feet in it for a race, um, these are commercial grade burlap um, sheets and you put them down, they're wet and, and they're in strips. And so you kind of uh, overlap them and everything, keep them wet. And uh, that does a really good job. Most uh, bridge decks in Oklahoma, you're required to do burlap. Um, right, be you know, right behind that, uh, when you get everything done. So that's the curing method. Sometimes people fog the top of the concrete where they take, like you can see here, where they just take a big uh, mister and they'll miss that top of that concrete. Um, so they don't want, you know, they don't pour water all over the concrete. They don't pond it. That's, you know, but they just fog, kind of fog it. They kind of mist it to make sure that the, it's not going to evaporate too long. Um, so when we talk about um, hot or cold weather now, so hot weather, you know, it's all about keeping that moisture in, keeping the temperature of that concrete down. Um, you don't want to have that evaporation, that, that crazy amount of evaporation. With cold weather, it's kind of the opposite, where you want to keep the warmth in. So you want to keep all your warm, your warm and stuff. You want to keep it all in. Um, the big thing with cold weather is you don't want your concrete freezing. You want to make sure that it's going to hydrate through the that placement window and finishing window because what it does is it'll extend um, the setting times. It'll extend your placement window, your finishing window, especially. So you know, cold weather just you know slows down that reaction. So to reduce that in the field, um, well. One of the, a couple of the biggest reasons why cold weather is a problem is because you can get surface scaling and cracking. Um, sometimes you're, you can have major reduced strengths in the field. Sometimes instead of you know being 12 hours as a normal day to, to place and finish the concrete and, and be done, it may take you 26 hours to place and finish that concrete. Most of it's all on that finishing part of it. Where, where, you know, when is it going to set up? When is it going to, you know, finally get to that final finish? Um, and really, you don't want your concrete to freeze. Okay, water freezes at 32 degrees F. Um, we have realized that hydration still may occur until about 14 degrees F. Um, but whenever you start getting the concrete temperature down past, uh, especially 36, 32, the, it, it, it gets to be really difficult for it to, uh, to keep setting up. Um, but once the temperature's at the right, the right amount, um, even if it does get froze, it will start back up. It just may be half the strength what it's supposed to be. Um, it may not have the strength gain that you'd expect over time if it does freeze. Um, you will have a lot of times scaling and cracking where the top of that surface will pop up because it's too weak and that uh, the, the actual water in the concrete will uh, kind of like we think about free stall durability. It'll actually, uh, you know, kind of in essence, create all that pressure and explode the top of the concrete. So it'll create, you know, differential stresses. So you don't really want that. So temperature is going to affect, um, how do I say this? So this is, so if you look at a mixture, the same mixture, but it's at different temperatures with no admixture, and you just change the internal temperature of that concrete, when we look at initial set and final set, if it's right there at 100 degrees, you may have a really quick initial set, you know, so from placing the concrete to an initial set, maybe two and a half hours, and then maybe you get another hour and a half and, and it's that final. Um, 
when you're down here at 40 degrees though, you know, it, it went from two and a half to almost 10 minutes or 10 hours just to get to initial set. And then it's another roughly 11 hours um, to get to final set. So that's kind of the difference where, you know, uh, it can really uh, mess up your, your, your working. So your goal is whenever you do cold weather, if you're trying to this placement window, you're trying not to go let it get too far extended. You want the placement and the finishing window to, to be to be pushed at to a normal a normal window. You don't want it extended. Um, so how can you do that? Well, one of the easiest ways is adding adding uh, uh, hot hot water. You can figure out how to make your aggregates not get froze. So sometimes people will uh, um, put them where they have a canopy, so water can't get in them as easy. Um, sometimes people have them underground. Up in Kansas City, they they have them where all the aggregates are underground. So you just have a dump truck that dumps into this grate, and that's kind of where your bin's set at. It's kind of a cool little system, and they're all kind of under underground with conveyor belts. And it, it works really well for them. They can control their moisture and their, their, their temperatures a lot better. Um, you can also lower your, your uh, fly ash content. So your SCM, um, you can lower that. So if you're at 25 or 20%, you might need to go down to 10. That could kind of help you out. Maybe you want to add a half a sack of cement. That can kind of help generate just heat. Uh, sometimes people, I've seen them, there was a customer I had down in Amarillo where he'd switched to a type three cement uh, during the winter time. And so instead of using a type one, type two cement, he'd use a type three um, just, to, just to generate the uh, um, temperature so much so they didn't have to wait, uh, which is pretty expensive, but that's another story. You can also lower the water cement ratio. So if you're at maybe a 0.52, if you lower it to a 0.48, the cement particles are closer together. They're gonna to react faster so that it's gonna to get to initial and final set quicker. Um, whenever they have an ACI 306, so this is a, one of the committees. Um, this is the one for cold weather concrete. They, pretty, they have basic, you know, rules. Um, this is one of the tables. I'm not going to necessarily get into too much about it, but they talk about different thicknesses and minimum temperatures you need to place that concrete. So minimum temperature of the fresh concrete as placed and maintained. So if, you, if your dimensions of your, of your section less than 12 inches this is kind of what you're going to go by and then there's different uh, dimensions you know your thickness dimension so obviously if you're pouring four inch slab you're going to be focused on this um, but in essence what they're trying to do is they're trying to say don't pour you don't want to pour on frozen subgrade uh, you want to remove any ice and snow from the from the ground, and you don't want to place your concrete if the concrete temperature is not at least you know blank. And that's kind of what this chart tells you is okay. So I need to have you know my concrete to be at, at least a blank internal temperature. And I'm not going to you know I'm not going to quiz you over what what some of this is because some of these tables are a little bit more outdated. Um, um, than, than I think they should be. So I won't necessarily quiz you over any of that. Um, so whenever we want to shorten this window, you want to go, you can use an accelerator when you want to shorten the finishing window. We already talked about the placement window. Now we're talking about the finishing window. So if you're not necessarily worried about the placement, but you're about the finishing window, 
So you can lower the um, accelerator. So you can add an accelerator one to 3%. You can use a, um, a lower amount of SCM. You may not want to use a water reducer with retarding properties in it. So a lignin-based water reducer, you may want to change to a different type of water reducer. Um, you also may want to change your curing method. So if you notice, I didn't talk about accelerators with a placement because accelerators really focus more on the finishing window, not the placement window. Um, so it's important. So that's why a lot of times when you call up concrete plant and you say, hey, I want, you know, 2% uh, on calcium accelerator and I want uh, hot water. So the hot water does the placement side of it. The accelerator does the uh, uh, finishing side. So the hot water does the, you know, I want to go out and place the concrete in a shorter window and the finishing is all about the accelerating that finishing window part. So that's why a lot of times you'll you do both, you combine them together. And it does help with the hot water to generate more heat so that whenever you go to your finishing window, it does, it does kind of um, generate, it, you already are generating more heat and the placement, so it kind of translate, translates over. So again, this is kind of what hot weather, whenever you have hot water in it, you have the steam coming up. Um, so it's kind of cold floor and concrete like that. Um, when we talk about curing in cold weather, you can go out and you can use uh, plastic. Uh, um, sometimes, both of these, I believe, are, are actually really thick blank, heated blankets. But sometimes you can just get away with with plastic if it's not, you know, if it's not too, it's not going to get too cold. But a lot of times you want to use heated blankets or something. Um, we've we've done jobs where we had large floor slabs and we knew that. Um, we needed to do more finishing, but it was going to be another three or four hours before we could finish the concrete again. So we actually put blankets on top of everything um, and let all that heat uh, stay in there. And that way we could come back three or four hours and it actually um, regenerated some of that heat. So we go back and finish the top of the floor slab and we wouldn't have, uh, um, we would get done quicker. Um, and it also helps so that the concrete wouldn't freeze. So you put all, you put the curing for the cold weather just to make sure nothing's going to freeze. Um, I think hot and cold weather is pretty basic for most people. Um, 